I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith, and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I'm grateful that you'd be willing to spend some of your evening with us tonight. Um, and I'm so delighted to introduce to you Ashley Shaw. Ashley, nice to have you here. Thanks, Appreciate Earl. you driving up and, and spending a, your evening with us here tonight. You bet. Now, you have an interesting history as far as your pioneer heritage. Tell us about that a little bit and your upbringing as a Latter-day Saint. Okay, well, I come from a long line of the pioneer heritage. Okay. Parley P. Pratt was my great-great-grandfather. Wow. And we found out just about five years ago that President Monson, I guess their is, President is Monson yeah. is, um, I think my third cousin. So yeah. we have Monsons on that side and he is wow. definitely that. So <laughs> yeah, we come from the very, long, very generational long Mormon. generational yeah. Mormon. Mom and dad active. Mom and dad or? totally still active. Are they? Uh-huh. And yeah. so that is, you know. So you were born in the covenant born, and the I church was, and yep, all that. Complete, Baptized at eight. And, Baptized at eight yeah. and uh, lived and breathed it really. Yeah. So it was everything. My whole world was yeah. being a Mormon. Well, here in Utah? Um, most of my life, yes. I mean, a little bit was in California, but it doesn't count. So, most, most of it But yeah. yeah, most of it yeah. is here in Utah, and that was just everything. It was wow. my world. Did so, you go yeah. to seminary? And Went to seminary. Yeah. I was a little bit of a rebellious Mormon. You know, to stand out, you kind of have to be a little bit more <laughs> rebellious. But I loved and truly just loved. Jesus when I was younger. I mean, I just, really, yeah, I was, I only really truly cared about him. So do you think that's unusual for um, young people in the church? I mean, I don't, I get a sense that they have a little more admiration for, maybe I'm wrong, I shouldn't say it maybe, but uh, Joseph Smith. And oh, definitely it was man-centered. Yeah. yeah, it was definitely man-centered. But I mean, even on my seminary scriptures, I would write, I love Jesus with in pen in the in part of the flap of my, you know, my quad. And um, I would get made fun of, you know. And really? Yeah, they look at me and go, oh, you love Jesus? And I go, oh, yes, I love him. So I just... I've always just been fascinated, I'm not fascinated, what's the word, just in awe for my Savior. Yeah. I just needed to know the right Savior. So <laughs> anyway, no, it definitely um, just had a heart for him. But I, I went through all the years of seminary, but I didn't graduate. And so, oh. yeah, it, I was fine with that. Still am very fine let, with that. Let me ask you, this may be ahead of schedule, but what did you think of the cross? When you, when you thought of Jesus, who, who were you saying you loved? I loved my Savior. We were always told He's the Savior, but I did not know exactly what the cross was for. Okay. And if any Mormon now is going to tell you that, they're not clear either. They're not. <laughs> no matter no matter how they say, no, no, He had to die, they don't know for sure. They, they will tell you that He paid for our sins in the garden. In the garden, yeah. And that He didn't have to die, that this was the most uh, evil world that we would crucify the Savior because yeah. they wouldn't dare do that on other worlds and we, we were the worst. We were the worst world, And yeah. so that was what I was told and yeah. that, 
you know, God had his God who had a God who, you yeah. know, and, and then I was told a couple years ago that God, this might be a little bit off track, but this is just has to be said that, that God, when he was before our, before being our God, that he sinned. On, Could have been a sinner. He was a sure, sinner, yeah. and it was just so. Yeah, definitely. Since we all have that promise to become God. Yeah, so the, the the message of the cross was completely blurred. It wasn't yeah. very. Not it wasn't yet. strong knowing what that is now. Yeah. It was just like, well, it didn't have to happen, but but it happened, you know. But because really, he paid for our sins out of every pore. Could you imagine how how you know? Yeah, I mean, definitely, it, it would be. But it was just like so much emphasis on yeah. the garden and, and praying and yes yeah. he did that and yes he was sweating and and because he knew what he was going to go through and right. begging the lord take the cup i mean but it's so different now so yeah. anyway i i <laughs> definitely they don't know yeah and they, they don't know and when they, they see a cross spirit, they look really. like vampires they're like because <laughs> yeah. they're not that is not the power of god to them yeah. so they, they just don't understand, don't have any respect. No. And he's their spirit brother. I mean, he and was the just the first Satan. one that came along and, mm -hmm. and, and presented he was the created, plan. Yeah. Right? He was the one that brought it forward and said, I'll do it. And we th I even remember growing up thinking, why couldn't I have been the one to step forward and have saved Jesus from doing it? I mean, seriously, you just, it's such an awful story. Yeah. <laughs> and so blasphemous in every way that it just makes people not understand exactly who Jesus is. And my heart goes out to the Mormons. It really just does. Yeah. So, Well, let me carry that one more step, and okay. then we'll get on to something else. I wrote a question down here. Why does every person that comes on and talks about Jesus in the way you just talked about him, and say they're now Christian, why, why do... Um, we're we're worshiping a different Jesus, and yet the Mormons would say, no, we worship Jesus too. But every person that's come through this process of becoming Christian and taking Christ's name on himself and being born again and all that, it's definitely a different Jesus. Completely different. Yeah. Um, and even their prophet, Hinckley, stated in one of their general conferences, people will say that we're not Christian because we do not worship the, the, the Jesus of the Bible. Yeah. And he said there is some truth to that yeah. because we he has think. now been revealed in this dispensation yeah. to Joseph Smith, Heavenly Father of flesh and bone and Jesus. And so that is a different Jesus. Your prophet just said it. Yeah. And so, yeah, no, 100%. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Yeah. And there are three different person er, beings, but one God, one and not God. three different bodies, yeah. it, three different personalities, beings, but one God. Yeah. And so, that is a different Jesus. And that's somebody to really worship, isn't it? An awesome God. We will never, if you think that you need to understand who Jesus is, who the Lord is, who God is, yeah. You're fooling yourself because there's no way that you will ever understand it. We can't in this in this flesh. He says, "Don't even try. You'll yeah. never understand." So, I submit to that, and I totally say yes, Lord, because He rescued. Wow, his. and you and you had this love for Him even early on. Yes, wow. and so when I left Mormonism, well, do you want me to tell the story of that? <laughs> well, we can. Where do you want me to go? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't. Uh, we just want to tell your story. So after high school, you I got well, married, you got and married? you know, wasn't sealed right away. My husband was still sealed to his ex-wife, oh, okay. and so we had to wait a couple of years for that so to you. go through. They wanted to make sure that we were really going to stay married because he had been married twice before, before okay. you know. So they they really wanted to make sure. So we had to wait for that clearing. Yeah. So I said, well, I want to go through the temple now because we got to go through the temple. I, that's where Jesus is and I need to be there. And so okay. I went through and... How was that experience? Boy, I had heard, now you're going to think we're in a cult, but don't worry about it. It's, <laughs> you're it's, you're going to be okay. You'll get through it. Boy, I, <laughs> I went there and I went, they weren't kidding. I mean, it was... But I was so brainwashed and so totally wanted God so bad that mm -hmm. I just was like, oh, it was wonderful. And I felt so elated and had the feelings because that's what they work on is a heart yeah. and a feeling. And they yeah. put you in a complete um, state of uh, don't think, just feel. Yeah. And, um, you know, kind of fearful. 
any of you that don't want to to do you know that part at the beginning yeah. don't want to do this don't. we'll get up and leave who's going to leave yeah. when there's 1500 people in the right. room that, that's an exaggeration watching, yeah. and your family's watching yeah. you know you're just going i mean that's really i'll be honest I started developing panic attacks in the temple. Oh my God, God did not let me be comfortable. And I'm not trying to act like, oh, look at me being so special. I truly um, believe, though, for me, I needed that, specifically me, in j just in general. I don't, you know, he works with everybody differently, but with me, it was almost laughable now that I look back at it because he's just, I had full blown panic attacks. They had to stop the video. All the people looked over at me, were super oh, upset really? with me that oh. I'd taken forever in you're, the bathroom. You're, you're serious. Oh, you? <laughs> I, but I thought there was something wrong with me that I wasn't yeah. good enough for him or just, I just was, you know, mind games. Oh, I'm not good enough. What, 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 what is this? It was the Lord will never be good enough. We're covered by the blood of Jesus. That's the yeah. difference now. But, but then you're just thinking what, you know, I, I just kept going and try to be more comfortable in it. Yeah, and, um, yeah. but definitely, uh, uh, one time, and I will share this is that when I was in there and this is a couple of years after me going, I remember sitting there and we were during the endowment session and you know the two the the two I forgot already the people that get up the, and kneel the witness the couple yeah. get up and they go to the altar and they do their thing I remember thinking these works are not going to save us we're all going to you, hell You really thought that I absolutely did I saw whitewashed tombs that this was completely blasphemous and it scared me that you, I saw you that. You really had a sensitivity to things. I My whole life, yeah. No. Right over my head. Yeah, and I'm sure there's other people. Listen, if you do feel that, do not doubt your doubts. You please listen to those doubts and you go deep into them and ask the Lord to, to reveal that to you because... Because why is this so why did cultish? The, it so was. Just, it was... I mean, you look back at the, at the way the Jews were in their temple having nothing to do with Masonic handshakes and things like that. I'm sorry, I'm going to be blunt, and that's no, just the way this one's going right. to go. No, It was sprinkling, uh, it, sprinkling animal blood Yeah, no, sacrificing. It had nothing to do with masonry. It had nothing to do with that. And you've got, um, it, it, just, it just is crazy to me. But you would, so you got this part in the temple where they lift their hands over their heads and they say yeah. those words. Okay, yeah, I'm not going to yeah. even do I it. Know. I know. Did you know I that the Jewish that. priests wouldn't even lift their hands over their heads to show that God was above them. Who do they think? I didn't know that. Yeah, they, if, when, you really, when you really look at what the Jews did, what may, meaning for the Jews, because Jesus and Christ is the temple. fulfillment. Yeah, yeah. This, this, it was all pointing to Jesus coming, yeah. okay? So, so when you look back and you just go, I mean, everything that they do in that temple is the most blasphemy. I've, I had to, when I realized be, when I was a believer and just I went to seminary started you know not LDS seminary but I, I wanted to know oh. the Bible that I went to actual college biblical Christianity college and learned really? and and learned what the Levitical law was and learned exactly what they did in the temple I got on my knees and prayed to God for, for forgiveness for the blasphemy that and I already knew I was forgiven but I just needed him to know to know that you were sorry that I was you, so sorry for the things that I did and all those oaths and all tokens. those oaths and all the the blasphemy it's such yeah. a it's such a blasphemy to the Lord I asked God to forgive me too because I said I did it in ignorance complete I, and he I knows thought, that yeah I I thought that uh, I'd certainly learned a lot. But before you came out, um, you and you went through the temple, and then you were active with your husband. Active with my husband, completely busy body, busy body, yeah. miserable as can and be. What, what happens after that? Um, basically, my dad died, and hmm. I really, really wanted to know since I had now somebody on the other side. You know, since we're we're always doing work for people on the other side, we had this like communion with people on the other side i don't so know so you felt like you could talk to so dad, i felt like huh? i could talk to my dad now i realize that is not the case anywhere? no at home i oh, just say okay. you know dad tell me if this church isn't true because it is confusing see i had things in my in my eyes that i would see that i would see this perfect creation the most perfect everything just works and you just go how and then you've got the mormon church and the mormon church and it's like all over the place. Yeah. It contradicts itself here. It says one thing here. Oh, changes. this is okay. He talked like a man here. He did this here. And you just go, how do I put this? Because God is like, boom, 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 boom. Never and, changing. In creation. Yeah. In, in creation. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And then you say, this is his true church. <laughs> and it's a smodge podge built together and people accept it. So were you learning so, about, oh, go ahead. No, so it, definitely I was just questioning and begging 
you know, at first I was, Dad, you got to tell me if this church is in trouble. I'll leave it. But then after finally understanding and watching people, God was slowly opening my eyes to how unsaved we truly were because I saw behavior that I thought, if you truly had Jesus, you wouldn't act like that. They were just, I'm not saying, look, where there's people, there's problems. Yeah. People are fallen. But if you're going to use the name Jesus on you, the things that I would see, I was like, there's just got to be something wrong. Are you talking about pride and judgment? Pride, or, judgment. Yeah. Um, oh, you know, just chatter about people. And it was yeah. just not right. I mean, yeah. the women were the worst. I mean, I thought high school was bad. Relief society stunk. I mean, I'd sit in the back and people were like, did she look in a mirror this morning? I mean, that was a horrible... I just thought, she's trying to look pretty. I mean, look, it, we're all fallen. I'm yeah. not trying to put anything bad on them, but it, it's a competition world with them. It's yeah. who's the most righteous, who did the more works. Yeah. Everybody became friends with the new bishop once he became that, yeah. and they all held down to that new bishop. I mean, it was, it was just, that's just their culture. That started making you think it's a little man, bit more. It's, it's man-centered. Yeah. It's, it's fallen. It's deceitful. It's, it's not correct. So anyway, I, I started noticing the people's behavior, and still, I, was, I just finally... It, it just, I got broken and said, Lord, I will follow you, whoever you are. I do not know you. I will, I will go to you. You recognize that. I realized, that you... I said, I will leave everything. I will take whatever, whatever, whatever I have to go through to know who you are. I will leave it Boy, to follow you. That's a sincere heart. And I just wanted him more yeah. than anything. And it was a couple more years. I had he had to have me go through so much, you know, so much more. Ashley, just a little bit more to really just have a heart for the Mormons to have mm -hmm. a, because I really do. I I think some some of them truly do want him. Yeah. And go to that temple and think that's for him and serving him because I did that. I thought, well, I got to get comfortable with it because that's where, you know, the, the heavenly Father of flesh and bone dwells with Jesus. I don't want to go to that second kingdom and have barbecues on the weekend and celestial kingdom and have them come down and who knows what and how does that work? And I was scared. Yeah. And they say that the Lord says the fear of the Lord is, is the beginning of his wisdom. And so I feared the creator. Yeah. And that's really what's, what's, what he gave me. I give no credit to myself. This has nothing to do with me. All about God. All glory given to him yeah. that he gave me the ability to and cry he, out to him. And he gave you a little answer. Well, yeah. I Finally, after I had hit rock bottom and I literally could not, could not go another moment into that church without knowing the truth. I begged him, just pleaded with him. To God. I, I said, I, will, I was going up to the, to the temple sometimes twice a week wow. because to try I, to search for answers for search for something. answers i was too scared to look into the anti-mormon things which is called church history but <laughs> um you know i was so scared to look and i wouldn't because i truly was still brainwashed so when i was in initiatory in the little area where you sit by yourself before you go in and yeah. do all those other little yeah. things um i literally was just at the, I, I, he had he had to take me to that point where I was just so saddened that I was going. If this is your church, I'm sorry, Lord, but this is miserable, you know. And it was just miserable. Yeah. But I will. I said, but I'll do it. I'll keep going. I'll keep going with it. If this I'll is do it. Do whatever you want. And I literally had, and I'm not going to do some Joseph Smith type thing. This was just for me. Not maybe not everybody feels. This isn't about a feeling. It was just an amazing amazing love that just hit me and knocked me over and tears just started coming out of my eyes and I and it wasn't an audible voice and I hear a voice it wasn't anything it was just you will know truth soon but it knocked the wind out of me like literally it just like I was just I I just didn't know what that I what just that was mean? comforted is all I can tell you yeah. and I didn't know exactly where I was headed with that but it was just so intense and so immense and I just started crying and then I was just elated the whole rest of the way and did all that little circle uh, thing I'm and gonna know the truth here soon <laughs> but I didn't know exactly you know what that meant it meant maybe yeah. I, I just knew that there was just a light at the end of this tunnel just to keep going yeah. and then it was so sure enough happened? sure enough my brother came to me um, three weeks later and said to me so you want to know the church isn't true and I said yeah did you know he was questioning I knew that he had been questioning for a while his wife had finally told me you know Jared hasn't been really 
you know, believing 100%. in this. There's he's yeah. he's really done a lot of research. You should talk to him sometime. You know, sometime I'm like, oh no no no, the you know the church is true. It's totally fine. It's fine. And then for some reason, I I just I remembered what I'd known in the temple that I was going to know, and I said, yeah, tell me. Tell me I was ready. I thought maybe that was where the answer was going to come. And so I was, well, I was ready for it. Were you blown away? I, my whole world was turned upside down. So, so I started crying, going, how do I deal with this, you know? And then I was happy at the same time, if that makes sense, going, yeah. yes, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. What did it. he show you? He showed me the church history. He showed me that Joseph Smith was a complete imbecile and <laughs> an, an absolute um, con man. Uh, like the Book of Abraham stuff or the Book of Mormon? Showed me that. He, he told me just that the man was a snake oil salesman. The guy was he obsessed. He talked about the seer. The seer stone is really what got me. I mean, well, he puts his. Well, actually, he, a lot of his crap he did really got to me. But that was one thing because the church will show you pictures of him on the, you yeah, know, you know, looking <laughs> at it, and there was never ever plates, never. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing was head and a hat. Uh, yeah, it was a head and a hat to try and fool some people, the ones that saw it, and and people will use that phrase now. Yeah, it happened like that. So what? So what? <laughs> they lied to you. Yeah. Take a look at that. They're liars. I thought you weren't supposed to lie. Are you followers of Jesus Christ or are you not? Yeah. You, they're lying to you. Yeah. And so, I, you know, that... And sometimes the gold plates weren't even in the room, we've heard, so... We I mean, never had them! Had a translate. They were under probably some rock with something over it, you know? I mean, honestly, he never had them. And so, and then, and here's what's neat about God's Word. What he was doing was occult type things. Yeah, Very a, evil. A new religion. He was doing satanic things, yeah. and and when you want to get down to the nitty gritty of it, an angel of light, say an angel of light did appear to Joseph. The Bible clearly says what that is. Yeah. If an angel of light preaches a different gospel, he is to be accursed. He is to yeah. be put away. That's what he saw, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> LDS people. He saw Lucifer. If yeah. that, if you really want to say, if, if believe he, if the he story, believed, if that he, he went, had an angel, if of he light. did, yeah. And so, and I think. Definitely during that time period, if you look back at the 1800s, there was major revival going on. Bible-believing people oh, yeah. just just being saved right and left. There was major revival. Yeah. Well, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> Satan's going to go and use suckers like Joseph Smith and go and say, come on, yeah. let's go rise up some people and, and try to deceive because that's what he does. Oh. So you'll see that the Jehovah's Witnesses came out of that time yeah. period. The Mormons, of course, and I think I don't want to be wrong here because I don't want you know to yeah. hear. But there was a lot of a lot of activity cult that, type that started up I, that started up during that yeah. time period. So, so what did your husband think? I went to him, and he had known that I was having secret talks with my brother, and he had said, "There's evil all over you. The church is true." And I, I was praying so much, oh. you know, just to to have his eyes be opened and I still didn't know the Lord just yet. I mean, I, I'll go into that too if you want me to go into Believe how Believe it or not, we've only got about three or four minutes oh, left. Oh, so, no! Yeah, okay. so you better go ahead and go into that Okay, right now. you need two hours for me. <laughs> okay, so, I'm just kidding. Um, so, my husband, he finally, I showed him DNC 132 and showed him that the flaming oh, sword was going to get Emma. Smith. Get Emma. <laughs> and he said, have we always read this? And right then and there, he just looked at me and said, this is a joke, right? And then he said, you got a different book. He literally thought I got a different book, went and found like some like anti-Mormon book and showed him. And he's like, are you doing a trick book to me? <laughs> and I said, this is my quad. Yeah. This is the quad from when I was 14 years old given to me when I got my patriarchal blessing. That's a whole other story. Yeah. Okay. So I'm like this is it and he goes i can't believe this okay i've got to investigate and then he got into understanding who brigham young was and the tyrant he was and the so just he, he eventually awful. came around yes a oh, month later God. you know he finally took all of his garments and you know shoved them in a garbage sack <laughs> i'm sorry but this is just you know i'm trying to be nice i just yeah. it's just he just was just very much uh I think you get hurt at the beginning. I'm so, I'm healed now. Yeah. But I was very hurt and angry at the beginning, and then you know the well, Lord just takes that and disappointed. away. But can you ever imagine going back? No. Well, Are I mean, you what, kidding me? What would you have to give up to go back? I mean, it'd I would be impossible. never. I would never go back. Yeah. You would. You would have to kill me. <laughs> so no, I have the Lord Jesus, and that. And you go to ch a Christian church. I go to a Christian that? church. Um, How it's was it wonderful. the first time you went? 
We, again, we've only got a couple of minutes. I was scared to death to go into a, uh, a Christian have church. Have a cross on it? That had a cross. I walked in and went, <gasps> and then, but I just, here's, here's the deal. I found out the church wasn't true. But I knew Jesus was real, and he was, and he was real Make because trust, he, yeah. he, he was the one that took me out, and I knew that. But I just said, I want to know who you are. So I walked into that church, Baptist church, yeah. and, I, and I said to the pastor, who is Jesus? And he showed me John 1, 1, and the word became flesh. Nice. Jesus is God. And I went, that's my Jesus. I know that Jesus. Wow. That's my Lord, my King. And I, I don't want to say that I was born again just right that right then but you were hearing a message you'd but never I knew heard before. that's my Jesus that's who I've been praying to I know him yeah and then um, it was only uh, probably a month later after that I was hearing a pastor say um, you know the, the gospel it, he died for our sins we are sinners and we need him and that's when I fell to my knees and I said I'm a sinner and I need you and I just that's when I was born again and I was different from then on it was completely isn't different. That, isn't that a joyful? And the Bible, I guess that just oh, is. Oh, read your Bible. <laughs> this is what cleanses you of this world. This is no God. Read the Word. Yeah. This is such a gift. Nothing added to it. Just read the Bible. Read it with fresh eyes. Yeah. Put all your things and all your things aside and read it for and ask the Lord to reveal things and with a true heart, with wow. all your heart. He, he'll tell you, he says he will, but he, he's the one that's drawing you to him. And all glory given to God, yeah. none to me, so. Well, I'm not I know there. you've kind of said this already, but do you have a, a, last, a last minute thing to say to the LDS people and read the Bible? And read the Bible, here's the thing. Don't add to Jesus Christ. You think that all these works are gonna get you there, but grace is a gift only given for, for to, to those who believe but it's free it's yeah. a free gift no works no, um, and so, then we do works because we are saved that's right we and they're his grace. works yeah Th those are his works those are what he says those are mine so so what a joy to be able to be his servant and to be able to do those works in his name and to know that that's him doing it and uh -huh. so that relationship with the Lord Jesus is all that matters he is the only way that I'm the way the truth he is the life. only way Jesus yeah. Christ but you have to remember what Peter said he said this Jesus this Jesus yeah. not a different Jesus okay okay thanks Ashley you're hey, so, such you're a sweetie welcome. okay appreciate you watching tonight and uh, please remember you're following that gospel of another gospel of Joseph Smith good night